The media's response to all this was just unbelievable last night, incredible last night, because the media, th their narrative here was not that deterrence was being reestablished. Their narrative is that a madman was leading us to the brink of war with these pitiful Iranians who had, of course, been converted into the Swiss by the JCPOA, that the Iranian nuclear deal had magically turned the Ayatollah Khamenei into, uh, into a Western European leader. Suddenly he was Emmanuel Macron. And basically Soleimani was Justin Trudeau, just a little bit more angry with a beard. And, and that was all because of the JCPOA. Basically, the Iran nuclear deal had defanged the, Iran the Iranians. And this is why you get Ben Rhodes, who's the architect of the Iran nuclear deal, who lied openly to the American people about the moderation inherent in the Iranian government that they were about to moderate if only we sent them cash. And last night he was tweeting out things like, this didn't need to happen. You're right, it didn't need to happen. You could have stood up to the Iranians the way Trump did, but instead you decided to pansy out, which is exactly what the... Obama administration did. The media have an interest in upholding that narrative. That is the common thread to the media coverage here. The media narrative is that everything was hunky-dory until Trump pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal, at which point Iran randomly started acting nasty again because they hate Trump. And if it weren't for that bad orange man, orange man, bad, bad orange man, then everything would have been hunky-dory in the Middle East. That ignores the thousands of dead Americans due to Iranian involvement in Iraq. It ignores the hundreds of thousands of dead Muslims in Syria, backed by Soleimani's play in Syria. It ignores the buildup of Hezbollah's military force and the wrecking of Lebanon, which was an Iranian development. It ignores the fact that Iraq has continued to be a roiling sectarian hellhole because of the Iranian involvement in Iraq. It ignores the attacks on Saudi oil facilities. It ignores the consistent monthly attacks, rocket attacks on American bases. It ignores the attacks on shipping against non-American targets in the Strait of Hormuz. And the fact is that the Iranians have been pursuing terrorism for literally decades. That escalated in the immediate aftermath of the JCPOA. Right before Obama left office, the Iranians took a bunch of Americans hostage, right? They took a bunch of American military men hostage, and then Trump and then Obama had to basically wheedle it out of them. Yeah, but the narrative, again, from the media side, is that this is all Trumpian craziness. So the problem is this didn't result as they wanted it to result. If the media had its way, we would be at war right now. If the media had its way, Iran would have retaliated much more harshly. They would have killed Americans. So I'm not saying that the American media are rooting for the death of American soldiers, they are rooting for an outcome bad for Trump so that they can prop up their narrative. And if that outcome that is bad for Trump involves more American assets being put in danger, they are happy. You could see the celebration in media last night, the, the thinly veiled celebration in media last night when Iran started firing the missiles, when it turned out it was a big nothing. You can see the disappointment this morning. Lawrence O'Donnell is a perfect example of this. Over at MSNBC, Lawrence O'Donnell actually tweeted, Trump wagged the dog. Now the dog is wagging Trump. It's right, celebrating. The idea that, that Trump had wagged the dog in order to avoid impeachment coverage, but now he had lost control of the situation. And the media need this narrative because, again, the narrative is that the Iranians were perfectly reasonable, that Obama had made them perfectly reasonable, and that Trump just drove them mad because Trump is a madman. Jim Acosta over at CNN doing the same routine. Jim Acosta, who doesn't know his ass from his elbow, suggesting last night, this is what the experts feared. This is exactly what the experts feared. Oh, my God, Jim Acosta. By the way, ladies, find you somebody who loves you like Jim Acosta loves him some Jim Acosta. The president's attention has been gotten by the Iranians, no question about it. Uh, and getting back to what I was saying earlier, Wolf, this, this is exactly what uh, many foreign policy and national security analysts feared here in Washington. A lot of Democrats have been talking about over the last uh, 72 hours uh, that the president, by, by targeting Soleimani, has essentially set uh, this chain of events, uh, chain of events into motion, and the question is whether the president will be able to get on top of it and handle it. Oh, well, you know, Jim Acosta looking real sad about that. This is what the experts feared. It's what they feared. Chris Hayes over at MSNBC doing the same thing. It's strategically and morally a disaster to go to war with Ron. No one's going to war with Ron, but you're going to have to explain how it's a moral disaster to kill the leading terrorist in the Middle East, responsible for literally tens of thousands of deaths, most of them Muslim. Before we go, I just Thank want to you. say this very clearly, that a war with Iran is madness and it is strategically and morally a disaster in the making. And don't believe anyone who tells you otherwise. Again, they're setting up that false narrative again and again that deterrence is full scale war and that appeasement is the only solution because that was the Obama solution was impeachment. We'll get to more of the media coverage, which was egregious and which, if the media had their way, would have driven Iran to new rounds of actual violence against Americans because the, the Iranians are watching the media coverage, too. They are. Did you know that every like on this video creates one additional leftist tier? Don't ask me why. That's called science. To take advantage of this amazing opportunity, hit the like button.